So point number one. Suffering draws us nearer to God by putting less confidence in the flesh. Psalms 34 verse 18. It says this, The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. And so we see here in this scripture that there is a a nearness that you get to experience with the Lord when you are going through suffering. You know, suffering is actually not the time to <laughs> to be away from God. Because then you miss the benefits, right? You miss the benefits of that season. You know, there are some seasons in life where you may um you may suffer greatly and it's it's for a season, it's for a purpose, it's for a time period. And God wants to show you another side of himself that you have never ever seen before. He wants to show you another layer, another dimension of his beauty, of his heart, of his power that will give you faith for future seasons when you're not suffering and when you're not going through hardship um, so that you may bless other people in those seasons. You know, it's hard to it's hard to grow in faith and grow in the knowledge of certain things if you yourself have never encountered or experienced that. And so if God is trying to make you into a healer, he may take you through a period of time where you are afflicted in your body and you need to seek him so much more to receive healing. And once you've received healing, you are able to now know, oh, it is possible for people to be healed. And so now when you pray for people for healing, there is um, more success because there is now the faith that links up with your prayer, that you actually believe that that person can be healed because you yourself have been healed as well. Um, and so I want to encourage you, you know, like if you are going through suffering, if, <laughs> if you've been suffering for a while, um, it might be because God has a plan to draw you closer to him. And you do yourself a big disservice um, when you, um, how do I say this? When you choose to suffer by yourself, maybe because you're upset with the Lord, or um, yeah, you'll find it hard to connect to him, or you want to just sort out things by yourself. It's a, it's a, it's a detrimental thing to do because the whole point of suffering is that you may know Jesus more. And, you know, to clarify the suffering that we are talking about here, I'm not talking about bad decision making that leads to issues. I am talking about suffering with Christ, suffering for Christ. I am talking about you've been obedient to God, but yet you're still suffering. You know, you're still going through a testing season. I'm talking about the trials and tribulations that come for us all you know the trials and tribulations that we find ourselves um just battling with on a daily basis that have nothing to do with any bad decisions that we've made you know and so if you are in that season if you are suffering if you are being faced with trials and tribulations draw nearer to god cry out to god the bible says here as i said it says the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. You know, there is a, another that dimension of salvation. There's another dimension of, of saving that we don't experience unless we go through suffering. There are certain things about the Lord and about his character that we will not be able to taste and see, you know, that, that the Lord is good um in those in those aspects um i read another scripture this is matthew 5 from 3 to 12 it says this and a lot of you will know this it's the beatitudes blessed are the poor in spirit 
for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven is great. For in this same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And so here we see Jesus is spinning things, right? He's putting, he's flipping things on their head. And he's, he's trying to tell people that, listen, the kingdom of God is very, very, is backwards compared to this world. You know, this world is evil. Like, let me just say it quite plainly. The, the crux of this world, the bedrock, the foundation of our systems, the way that we talk to each other, the way that we operate with each other, um, how we think, how we work, uh, everything is rooted in rebellion. It's rooted in human pride and ignorance of what is true and good and divine, right? And Jesus is trying to let us know here that, no, this is the way of God. Like, this is the way of the kingdom of God. This is the truth, right? That supersedes this earth. Because remember, this earth was created by God. The kingdom of God was here before this earth. This earth was created by God. Jesus lets us know here that, you know, blessed are those who are poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. When he speaks about those who are poor in spirit here, he's talking about those who understand their need for him. And oftentimes, if we don't go through any suffering, we forget our need for God. This is why it is difficult for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven, right? Like this is what Jesus is talking about. He's saying that like, when you are somebody who, as far as you are concerned, all of your needs are met, you, it will, it's harder for you to see the spiritual, emotional, mental need for God because you have all this money, you have these materials, um, your situation is fine, your, like, your circumstances are cool. You know what I mean? Your life is set up in a certain way. And so therefore, you don't perceive the actual need for God that you actually do have as a human being, right? The Bible says that eternity is in the heart of man. All of us have an eternal hole in our chest that needs to be filled by God, which is why a rich person is still never satisfied. A healthy person is still never satisfied with their health, right? Like no one is ever satisfied like completely. And the only way to get satisfied completely is by having a relationship with God who is eternally satisfying because he is eternal. And so <clears throat> going back to what I was saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You have to recognize your need for God. And in order to recognize your need for God, there has to be times of suffering for the Christian. And also, just by default of being in this wicked world, we are going to suffer because we are opposed to this world. We are like rubbing against, you know, the grain, right? We're against the grain um, of, this, of this world. And so therefore, the poor in spirit is going to be a reality for people who believe in Jesus and people who believe in God. And so this is a good thing. As I said, point number one, suffering draws us nearer to God by putting less confidence in the flesh. And I'll read um, a bit of that first scripture that I read at the beginning of the podcast, which is Philippians 3. Uh, this is verse 10. It says that I may know him 
and the power of his resurrection and the, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death. Point number two, suffering builds character. So we see in James 1 verses uh, 2 to 4, it says this, Consider it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be complete and perfect, lacking in nothing. And so the, the, the word perfect here, the word perfect here, because you know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people read the scripture and they think, um, you know, perfect, like <laughs> perfect and complete. I'll never be perfect, right? The word here, perfect, it doesn't refer to perfection in the sense of without blemish or, um, yeah, completely perfect in that regard. The word perfect here in the Greek that it's actually written in actually refers to being complete in various applications of labor, growth, mental, and moral character. It also refers to a completeness in the sense of a full-aged man or perfect. So essentially what James is saying here is that actually like the suffering that we go through on this earth, if we go through this suffering well with God, right? Holding on to God, putting our full faith and trust in the Lord, then what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to work for our good. I find that there are many people who are living the opposite of this scripture, sadly, right? Where they don't consider it all joy when they encounter various trials. And actually, they run from trials. They run from suffering. They try to put band-aids on suffering and trials. And so what happens is that their faith is not tested, which means that they don't get endurance. They don't let endurance have its perfect result. And so therefore, they do not end up being perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. And as I said here, that perfect and complete, it refers to maturity. And so we have a lot of Christians or a lot of, a lot of called and creative people who are supposed to be really mature in the world, right? Really mature, a really mature source of light in the world. But because they have forfeited suffering and they've forfeited that process of endurance, they don't have the weight inside of them to, um, to influence other people, right? Um, they don't have the weight inside of them to be a mature a uh, son or daughter of God to minister Jesus to other people. And, you know, we, we know that Jesus himself is mature. He's, he's the, he is the full maturity, right, <laughs> of God, right? And so how can other people see Jesus if us ourselves have not conformed to the maturity of Jesus via the Holy Spirit? taking us through these different challenges and sufferings right and so that is something uh, to think about this last bit of the scripture <clears throat> where it says um lacking in nothing actually refers once again in the greek it actually refers to somebody who wants for nothing right somebody who is completely satisfied and fulfilled Somebody who doesn't need to chase extra things to make themselves feel better about themselves, right? We all have our vices, um, <laughs> the extra things that we, we do to make ourselves feel better. For some people, it's going shopping. Like they need to go and buy clothes, otherwise they don't feel good about themselves. For some people, it is um, wearing excessive makeup, for instance. If they don't do that, they don't feel good about themselves. For some people, it is um, going to the gym, not for fitness or health reasons, but purely, purely for aesthetics. And if they aren't looking bulky, 
then they don't feel good about themselves. You know, for some people, it is um, food. That if they're not eating, you know, an amazing meal when they're feeling down, then they don't feel better about themselves. And so we all have different vices that we use to do this. But it is through the process of trials and tribulations, sufferings, that puts things into perspective for us. It produces endurance and then it produces maturity in us as believers. So, as I said, point number two, suffering builds character. Hey, if you're somebody who's into poetry, then I've got something just for you. With years of suffering, observations, and wisdom from the spirit, I have authored a few poetry books to poetically persuade people to change their perceptions for the better. This book is called The Young Carers Inc. from the Poetic Persuasion series. This book is for anyone who is looking for poetry that connects, challenges and encourages them. It tells a story of life during my young caring years that shines a light on the hope and perspective that knowing God brings. I really do believe that God will speak to you. If you want a copy, check the link in the description or head over to Amazon.